So today I'm joined by Mark Myers from Myers Counselling Group. Mark, uh, thank you for taking time out to, to talk to us today. Uh, would you like to give our listeners uh, uh, some uh, of your background? Hey, again, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Uh, my name is Mark Myers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, also a certified drug and alcohol counsellor. I've been working in the private practice for over 15 years. I've also had experience in working in school systems and hospital settings prior to my private practice and currently I'm located in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Brilliant, excellent. And and do you see bullying um, today as, as a big issue and even I'm thinking historically uh, as big as it was maybe five or ten years ago uh, or, or is it um, with all the press and uh, PR it's getting at the moment, is, is it slowly starting to uh, improve? I think awareness has greatly increased regarding bullying. I think people are much more sensitive to bullying and able to recognize it. You know, unfortunately, though, I still think it is as big a problem today as it was years ago. I understand. Uh, and do you see a, a difference in how bullying is happening today? I guess in the last few years we have um, everyone's got internet on their mobile phone, everyone's got a mobile phone, uh, social networks have taken over the world, uh, so the world is a different place today, so is bullying still done um, in the playground or on the, the school buses or uh, in the in the uh, streets outside our home or, or is, it, is there a different type of bullying uh, happening at the moment? Well, you, you bring up a good point. When I indicated that bullying, that there's more awareness to it, that's, that's the good news. The bad news is that there's many more means that people have at their disposal today to bully, uh, whether it be with uh, texting, uh, some of the social media, Facebook. Uh, I unfortunately usually see uh, every couple of weeks uh, somebody coming in as a result of some, uh, some form of cyberbullying. Clearly, cyberbullying is on the rise. Uh, there's many more means for for people to uh, take advantage of other uh, other people along those lines. Uh, as you mentioned, texting. Uh, there's many much uh, again. There's much more of, uh, at their disposal through the social media, through our technology and advances in technologies today. We, we certainly there's certainly many more means for them to, to be able to exert their bullying on other people. Uh, and, and you mentioned that people are actually coming in to, to see you um, in regard to cyberbullying. It, it, it's, it's got that bad? Correct, particularly Facebook. Um, one, you know, in, in, if we're talking uh, specifically around teenagers, uh, one person liking or disconnecting another person or not liking on, a, on Facebook you know, certainly could create uh, repercussions throughout their, their own little community there. So I certainly have seen um, some pretty nasty things go on in Facebook. Uh, not just specifically Facebook, but that's just naming one of the social media uh, as, well, as well as it happens in, uh, within Twitter, within, um, as you mentioned before, texting. I mean, there's just many, many means that they have at their disposal now. Understand, and and would it be generally children that are having the the problems on on the social networks uh, with cyberbullying, or is it uh, adults as well? Well, it it if it, it, it's 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 not just exclusively cyberbullying. Yeah. Uh, again, that's that's one form. It it presents itself. There's still a good deal of physical bullying that does go on, you know, as well as well as verbal bu uh, bullying. Um, you know, bullying again could take on many different different forms. I previously mentioned uh, texting. You know that uh, that's a form that people use to bully. Um, rumors, put downs, gossip. I mean, those are all things that fall within the you know the auspices of of people being bullied. Of course, of course. And I guess um, the bullies themselves probably use a variety of of methods. Uh, at their disposal to to target a, a victim. Correct. Whether it be uh, subtle bullying, whether it be direct bullying, uh, you know, usually that there's there's a you know there's a thought process 
that may go on with some of the bullying. I mean, as much as we come up with avenues to address it, unfortunately, there there may be just as many uh, creative avenues that that people will use to you know to bully victims. I understand. And and the the media, as we said, the media has done a, a good job actually of raising awareness um, but also uh, uh, there's maybe a, a downside to the media as well um, the way that we treat uh, celebrities um, and and uh, even on Twitter and, and sites like this as we're talking about um, sometimes they can get a little bit hounded maybe fans uh, um, a football player might get some abuse after a game um, and these are things that maybe are accepted or uh, now becoming a social norm and it's um, maybe giving our, our young people a, a bad impression of what can and should be done on these social networks and the internet and uh, obviously that's filtering down into our, our school systems as well which is never a good thing. Um, if, if, if a parent um, was talking to their child about bullying, how, how could they explain or try and educate the child? What's the best way for them to, to try and ensure that their child understands that bullying is a, is a bad thing and, and they shouldn't be involved in it in any way or form? Well, the first thing I think parents, it, it, look, it needs to come from within, uh, from the families, from the school systems, from uh, the community you mentioned as well, the media. I mean, if you come up with many forms of uh, the way uh, people behave and, and conduct themselves, as, as if you don't mind, as an aside, I, uh, I also volunteer to do some of the uh, community, uh, you mentioned sports. I do a lot of um, volunteering in, within the sports for, my, uh, for some of my kids, and we have refs out there that are 14, 15, 16 year old, year old that are doing their best jobs to try to referee games where you'll have parents just from the stands trying to berate and intimidate some of these kids because they don't feel the calls are going their way. Uh -huh. So I certainly think a lot of the role modeling that goes on, uh, you know, happens within the uh, the mainstream media, not uh -huh. them particularly, but people who, you know, they, they, they see these things. They see the, um, you know, sh whether it be sh uh, actors or sports figures, it certainly is prominent. So. What parents could do, and we could start with the parents. I think first, they, what 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 is important is for for parents to be able to present and convey to their kids a, a couple important uh, concepts here. Number one, they need to recognize that bullying is going on. Again, some of these things could be pretty subtle, whether it be somebody inadvertently quote unquote knocking somebody's books down, you know, and laughing about it or put you know, being put down, uh, or people laughing when they walk into a room. Uh, it's important for parents to, to to get kids to understand that whether it bullying doesn't have to be a kid being put in shoved inside a locker and, and it doesn't take on that form. You know that and have enough confidence in themselves that something is wrong about this this exchange that I'm having with this person. Something makes me feel uncomfortable enough that that I need you know I need to recognize that this is just not acceptable. I think that's the first thing you mm -hmm. know is getting empowering a kid. Number two is even if a kid does recognize it, they're not always going to feel safe in being able to. To, to present these concerns, you know, uh, and I think that's that message needs to come from the school that there is not a there's not acceptance of this type of behavior, and that the school will back this child up if if this child discloses that he is a victim or he or she is being a victim of being born. I think going back to you know feeling within the you know within the you know for parents to. You know, to be aware, to to work on, to do whatever they can to build their kids' confidence up enough to to be able to feel that they can disclose and can trust that they could give this information and and work with the parents, work with the schools, or work within the outside the community or other parents in addressing this issue. Of course, 
of course. And I think you made a, a, an excellent point, and uh, I, I'm shocked to hear the story about the, the young referees and they're trying to do their best and uh, develop their skills and maybe a, a career for themselves. And, and you're right, uh, getting abuse is, is not acceptable. And when you do think about it, in, in, in again, going back to football games or sport games, uh, when something goes uh, wrong, uh, the players tend to surround the referee and uh, often you see them being berated um, and abused and yet again this is uh, what we accept and uh, it's uh, exactly the role mo models that our children are looking at so it's not just something in, in schools or in homes, it's actually society itself is, uh, is broken that we need to uh, really have a look at what we're doing and what's happening and uh, maybe start again. So so a big job for for all of us, I think. Um, and the, if we if we're talking about this, is there long term effects on on people who are bullied? Do, do you, have you seen this in in your years of um, practicing? Yes, there is. There there's certainly long term effects. Uh, you know, adolescence particularly is is a very influential time. Uh, you you know, kids have uh, there's been some documented. Uh, cases of kids being bullied and as a result of that committing suicide or making attempts at committing suicide. Uh, statistically, there's been some indications of uh, you know, kids with, with lack of confidence in themselves, um, social, social, isolation, social isolation, low self-esteem, uh, I mean, there's significant long-term effects and numerous ones that children could experience through, you know, through their childhood that may, may themselves, the possibility of them turning uh, into bullies is, is certainly um, a possibility. I mean, you talk about a child who feels that they're being picked on on a regular basis, there's certainly going to be a lot of anger that in that child, you know, and growing up. And those things are going to be presented and those things are going to be coming out in other relationships that he or she has, whether it be their own children or, um, you know, or, or husbands and wives. Um, those certainly are going to be playing a role as far as the experiences that they've had uh, being victims of bullying. Very good, and you, you've uh, hit a hit a very valid point. So the cycle continues and continues, and, and we never break it. Exactly. Exactly. And um, when we're talking about bullies themselves, um, how do you think a school uh, should, should, or even a parent, deal with a bully when, when they get the very sad news or realise or even start to, to worry that maybe their child could be a bully? Um, what, what should they do or say to them to try and, uh, again, bring them back from that, bring them back uh, to, I guess, uh, a normal, um, the normal actions and activities that a child should be doing? Well, we, we did discuss about coming from uh, from within, you know, the family. Yeah. I think again, that's a starting point. Regarding the school, uh, a lot of schools are uh, implementing bullying programming, uh, whether it be, uh, I believe, there's a Seven Pillars, uh, Second Step, Rachel's Challenge. Uh, a lot of schools are incorporating this into their curriculums, so there, you know, that that's a that's a very positive um, step. There are limitations to what schools can do. In fact, uh, a few years back, I believe the schools had a, uh, were able to be a lot more aggressive into being able to address um, the bullying. You know, there would be zero, zero tolerance, and I still think that schools are, are making an active uh, attempt at trying to stymie the bullying. But unfortunately, with some of these uh, zero tolerance policies, you know that the schools would implement. Um, with that zero policy, came a lot of different lawsuits and challenges to, you know, to school districts, and a lot of them found it pretty expensive to enforce the zero tolerance. So they've had to back off to, you know, from, uh, you know, from from some of those policies. But most schools still have these policies, some policies in place to address bullying. Almost all school systems, and in fact, all school systems, at least in the uh, Illinois area, do have some sort of social worker or psychologist on board who children could uh, talk to and uh, discuss these issues. But a lot of the schools are implementing um, 
actual programming into their curriculum. But there's no statewide or federal mandates that tell them they specifically have to do this. It really varies, and each policy varies from uh, school district to school district. So if I have a school district, uh, Newton other school district um, 10 miles away from me, they may conduct themselves or have their policies a lot different than the one I would be in. Wow, amazing. So so basically we need to, to fix the problem in schools, uh, encourage uh, better communications in home and hope, hope that uh, society and uh, all the role models uh, that uh, uh, surround us every day uh, start to realise what the, what the impact is in their actions uh, with everyone that's watching them. Um, if a child is being bullied, do they, do, does their personality change? Is there a change in behaviour? Is there things that a, a parent might see that uh, might give them an uh, indication that their child has been bullied? Yes, there is. Um, there's what a parent may look for or would look for uh, to see if their child is a victim of bullying. And, and not that these particular signs in of itself will will be an exact indicator, but these are the things that parents may look for. You may look for unexplained injuries, you know, uh, bruises, cuts, scrapes, things in that regard. So you may see a child uh, withdrawing more, isolating. Uh, children who are being victimized, uh, wherever they're being victimized, there would be uh, an avoidance of wanting to go to that particular uh, location, whether it be school, you may see a child want to now want to go to school, have a, you know, present a lot more somatic complaints, I don't feel well, I don't want to go to school today, um, you may see them have fewer friends, uh, lack of confidence in yourself, that in themselves, you may see, you know, that's kind of hard to gauge, but you, you could usually tell by statements, self-defeating statements, uh, things in that regards, maybe a change of uh, eating habits. Basically, you want to look and see is, is, is particularly is what is, you know, something is strikingly different from your child, you know, particularly um, a child who may not have a, a large network of friends or may start out with a lot of, with some low confidence. You know, you really want to, you know, be aware of, of any kind of behavioral changes that you see in your child. Again, not all these are going to be clear indicators that, you know, no doubt about it, my child is being bullied. But I certainly think if you, if a parent starts seeing some of these indicators, you know, with it, that certainly lends itself to a conversation. And, and you're not necessarily going to get an answer from your child, but I think you need to open that up. Maybe even talk to the school, you know, or, or a location, if it's a church or if it's a community group, even if it's a sports team. You know, uh, you know, talk to the person, uh, whether it be a, a coach or a teacher or a social worker, you know, ask them to um, for further assistance in exploring or ruling out that bullying is happening to your child. Very good. Uh, and uh, do bullies themselves ever feel remorse for what they've done? Well, usually not when the, the, the actual bullying is taking place. I think at some point for some bullies, you know, there, there, there could be some inherent issues going on that will not um, allow them at that particular point in their lives to access the empathy. Uh, sometimes when kids have a, have a, more of a chance to reflect back, maybe during the time, like if, if a, for instance, if a child was um, uh, a school bully, you know, he's doing most of the bullying in school, maybe after a few years after his formidable, formidable high school years, he may reflect back and say, boy, was I a real jerk about that? But usually, in the midst of it, you're not often going to see that. You know, real, what 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 you what you may see is if you if you recognize and confront the bully uh, at some point when they're able to step back from that moment, then you may see them starting to experience remorse or regret or recrimination or understanding of of what impact their actions have. But they're not, you know, usually not when the episodes are happening. And and do bullies themselves, um, as they grow older and become adults, do do they tend to 
continue to bully in later life? Um, or what what personality traits would they tend to to have uh, as they're older? The, 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 when we've been talking about the context, usually within the education, mm-hmm. uh, but certainly it doesn't. It, it certainly doesn't exist. I mentioned before I'm part of a, a basketball association, and I, you know, I see this. Um, we've had a, you know, uh, ask a few coaches uh, every now and then to, you know, to step down because they're bullying the kids, they're bullying the referees. You know, they're bullying other parents. So these are certainly things that we can't rely on that they'll age out of. I mean, certainly we, we see these, you know, whether workplace bullying happens. You know, there, there's, uh, it, it, and it happens in a lot of different forms. So within the community, within workplaces, uh, these things, again, don't, don't end in, a, you know, the, the behaviors don't end just once, once a kid uh, grows older, oftentimes these these types of behaviors could be embedded. You know, especially if they if they feel that there's a gain that they can get from that. You know, people are backing down, they're being intimidated, and they get what they're looking for through their bullying. Um, that gets reinforced, and that's brought into other life experiences throughout their you know, throughout their lives. Wow, very. And uh, do you, would you have any knowledge or ever seen? I guess very severe cases of bullying, which has had some very starting, uh, I guess, consequences. Uh, sure, I, I can name a couple here. I mentioned about the, the basketball association mm-hmm. where an adult was, you know, bullying a, a 15-year-old ref, where the ref wound up in tears. Uh, what I've seen on the clinical level, I've seen where uh, one youth. And I talked about how, how difficult it may be to to pinpoint the bullying for in, in some cases. The one youth I was working with, uh, with this one bullying, it started in uh, sixth grade. And here in Illinois, we have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade as middle school. So it started at the beginning of his middle school, where a, a youth was, they were friends, but then this youth apparently became kind of, you know, jealous of, of my client and subtly during the course of time really made things difficult for him. Like if, if, you know, he had a birthday party or wanted to do a sleepover, you know, he would call the people, he, you know, the, the other youth would call people uh, and get them to sleep over at his house instead. Um, with conversations when they sat down at a table, uh, he would be sitting with his friends, this kid with the bully would come in and sit down with them and try and get the kids just to talk to him and ignore my, my client. So that there was some of these things were were subtle in the beginning, you know, enough to to you know, to, to, to to make my client certainly feel uncomfortable, and certainly you know feel um, not a whole lot of confidence in himself. And then as he, when we went through seventh grade, it became a lot more aggressive, you know, with it, where he would actually be calling him names. Uh, and in eighth grade, it 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 got to a point where. Uh, I mean, a lot of school personnel were called in, my, and I started working with a child in, in eighth grade, and for the most part, what we were working on for the later part of the year is ways that he could cope and get through the, the next several months. Uh, the school had limitations to what they could do because, again, those, that's, that's a lot, you know, some of the bullying was subtle, um, and it, it became where this child was, was just not wanting to go to school. His grades were decreased, you know, were, um, were dropping. And, he, you know, he made it through eighth grade. And the good news is uh, when he got into high school, it was a bigger school, and he was able to avoid that youth a lot more. But we were, you know, we were able to work on different types of coping skills to get him through the year. Working with another kid was um, uh, had a, some disagreements with the youth in eighth grade, and the same kid came into uh, the high school, and he this, it, this um, my client wound up getting into numerous altercations because of this. And usually, um, our geographical boundaries for schools are pretty uh, pretty solid. I mean, very rarely do they deviate from that. But this case, it got to be where it was so extreme for my client to be able to to have to stay in that same high school. That they agreed to transfer him to another high school. 
Wow. So, so, so the move the victim from the school um, to 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 protect uh, him and to allow him to to study um, and, and progress in his uh, uh, education. Um, th that's what happened, yeah. Correct. Yeah, we we were able to with the high school student. We were able to, you know, get the school to agree that the transfer was was necessary. Yeah. Um, Amazing. So it's, it's, yeah, it shows yeah. you it really is impacting. You know these these people should be studying and uh, enjoying the, the their life when it's carefree and not worried about bills and families and jobs, um, and 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 looking forward to their uh, future careers and seeing seeing the world, but they're afraid to go to school and uh, their their studies are the last thing on their mind. So of course, for sure, our future gen generations are being impacted then by this. Exactly, and we also have to look at the fact that, you know, high school is very formidable years, emotionally, developmentally, kids, I mean, what what may seem as, as something, oh boy, you know, as an adult, we should be able to deal with it, don't ignore it, you know, for a kid, going through that and every day having this disconnect with peers and feeling, you know, intimidated, feeling, I mean, that, that's, that's a horrible experience for a lot of kids to go through at this age. You know, at any age, but particularly at you know, at some formidable uh, developmental years. Uh, you're right. I mean, that, that's just something you'd like them to see, <laughs> not to have to, uh, to feel that they're enduring. But you know, you want to get them to enjoy life. You know, enjoy going to school and enjoy their peers and look back at these years um, with fondness and not not with um, you know not with horror. So it's a, a big challenge. Well, it sounds like you're you're doing a great job, but uh, all the the teenagers that you're uh, dealing with, so it's uh, very good to hear. And again, thank you very much for for taking time out to to share your knowledge and experience with us today. Uh, it's very much appreciated. If if anyone uh, in your local area, of course, wants to reach out uh, to you to talk or get more details uh, about yourself, uh, what would be the the best way for them to do that? Well, I have a website um, that has all my contact information. Uh, I have YouTube, I'm on Facebook, Twitter. But my website is MyersCounseling.com, M-Y-E-R-S Counseling.com. And all my contact information, all my social media uh, outlets will, will be posted on there. That's probably the easiest way to, to do that. Uh, I do have a phone number, 815 356 I'm sorry, 815 uh, I'm sorry, 847-263-1269, and people can reach me there. Very good. And um, we, we put, of course, live links in, in all the show notes, so everyone can uh, just click and, and reach you that way. Again, thank you very much. That, that was uh, great.